The book of Genesis, chapter 18, resuming our study in verse 30, and we are right in the middle of Abraham bargaining with God, and Abraham is trying to get God to lower the standards, I suppose you might say, for him to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. And like I said, we pick it up in verse 30, Father, sanctify sanctify us by your truth. Your word is truth. In Jesus' name, amen. Abraham started out by saying, well, if there are 50 righteous in Sodom, will you still destroy the city? God said, no. Nope. And he's been going down. Every time God says, no, I won't. Then he kind of pushes God a little further. Verse 30, he said unto him, oh, let not the Lord be angry, and I will speak. Peradventure there shall thirty be found there. And he said, I will not do it if I find thirty there. So Abraham seems to be getting a little concerned that he might be pushing God too far. You know, he evidently doesn't want God to think that he is uh, taking advantage of his goodness, even though that's exactly what he is doing. And I can tell you this, if we didn't take advantage of God's goodness, we wouldn't even be alive. The only hope that anyone has is to take advantage of God's goodness. 31, and he said, Behold now, I have taken upon me to speak unto the Lord. Peradventure, there shall be twenty found there. And he said, I will not destroy it for twenty's sake. In other words, God... Are 20 good people enough to make that place worth sparing? And God said, yes. Verse 32, and he said, Oh, let not the Lord be angry, and I will speak yet but this once. Peradventure, 10 shall be found there. And he said, I will not destroy it for 10's sake. Abraham may be thinking, I've got it down to 10. And I think that's low enough. See, Abraham knew his nephew Lot was there. And then there was his wife. So that's two, four daughters. That brings it up to six, two sons-in-law. That makes eight right there. And you just have to figure that Lot made at least two converts all the time he's been in Sodom. So Abraham figures that he's safe, stopping at ten. 33, and the Lord went his way as soon as he had left communing with Abraham. And Abraham returned unto his place. Abraham did all he could do. Now everything depends on if there are ten good people in Sodom. There's only so much that others can do for you or you can do for others. People can pray and teach and plead but the thing which determines if a person will be blessed or cursed is them and how they respond to God. Chapter 19. And there came two angels to Sodom at evening, and Lot sat in the gate of Sodom. And Lot, seeing them, rose up to meet them, and he bowed himself with his face toward the ground. You know, sort of like Abraham's response to the angels and the Lord when they showed up at his place. Lot became an important person in Sodom. We know that because it says he was sitting in the gate and the city gates were for public officials and important businessmen. So Lot chose the area of Sodom because he had dreams of wealth and I guess those dreams came true. He reached those particular goals. Verse 2. And he that is Lot said, Behold now, my lords, turn in, I pray you, into your servant's house, and tarry all night, and wash your feet. And you shall rise up early and go on your ways. And they said, No, but we will abide in the street all night. You know, the angels did not come to Sodom to visit Lot or anyone else. They came to investigate. That's why they want to spend the night in the streets. They want their investigation to be thorough. And then, if things are as sinful as reported, they will know. Verse 3. And he 
that his lot pressed upon them greatly, and they turned in unto him and entered into his house. And he made them a feast, and did bake unleavened bread, and they did eat. Lot knew that it was not safe to spend the night on the streets of Sodom, and so he persuades these two men, these two angels, I don't know if Lot knew they were angels or not, to come home with him. Verse 4, But before they lay down, the men of the city, even the men of Sodom, compassed the house round both young and old, all the people from every quarter. The homosexuals learn of the two men at Lot's house. So they surround the place like hungry sharks. Verse 5, And they called unto Lot and said unto him, Where are the men which came into you this night? Bring them out to us that we may know them. Know them. Know them means have homosexual acts with them. And notice they did not make a request. They made a demand. They demand to commit their sin. Sinning in secret is bad. But this type of in your face, we're going to do it and you're going to be okay with it, indicates an unholy boldness and a very hard heart. And any society that demands the right to sin and demands that it be seen as okay is probably on the verge of experiencing God's wrath. This one certainly was. Six. And Lot went out at the door unto them and shut the door after him and said, I pray you, brethren, do not do so wickedly. Well, Lot was right about one thing. Homosexual acts are wicked in the sight of God. He was right about that. Leviticus 18.22 says, God says, you shall not lie with a male as with a woman. It is an abomination. God says homosexuality, homosexual acts is an abomination. Romans 1.26 and 27 says this, For this reason God gave them up to vile passions. For even the women exchanged the natural use for what is against nature. Likewise also the men leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust for one another, men with men, committing what is shameful. So God says homosexual acts are shameful. They are unnatural. They are wicked. They are vile. Uh, do you need to hear any more? And yet some people say, well, no, it's, it's okay, it's fine. Or... And some evangelicals, some, some other Christians won't even take a stand against it. Some openly accept it. Lot has more guts than many preachers today, I'll tell you that. He's actually calling homosexual acts sinful. But don't be too impressed with Lot yet, because notice what he does in verse 8. This is unbelievable. Lot says, Behold now, I have two daughters which have not known man. Let me, I pray you, bring them out unto you, and do you to them as it is good in your eyes. Only unto these men do nothing, for therefore came they under the shadow of my roof. Well, I know that people placed an emphasis on hospitality and taking care of your guests in those days, but this is just insanity. This is not a question of culture. This is a question of right and wrong. Lot has spent too much time in Sodom, so now there is too much Sodom in Lot. You know, when a Christian exposes themselves to too much evil and not enough God, they will become desensitized to that evil. Verse 9. And they said, Stand back. And he said again, this one fellow came into sojourn and he will needs be a judge. And now we will deal worse with you than with them. And they pressed sore upon the man, even Lot, and came near to break the door. 
Well, they didn't like being called wicked, did they? They didn't like being told that what they wanted to do was wrong. They wanted to be accepted. They wanted to be called normal. They accused Lot of being judgmental. Lot wasn't being judgmental. He was simply passing on what God, the judge, has already said about homosexual acts, and that's that homosexual acts, like any other sin, is wrong. Verse 10. But the men, it's talking about the two angels, put forth their hand. They grabbed Lot. And they pulled Lot into the house to them and shut the door. Lot wasn't getting anywhere with these sinners. He tried to reason with them. But it was getting dangerous, so the angels grabbed him and pulled him safely into the house. Angels are doing that same type of thing for us Christians today. The Bible says they are sent by God to help Christians. Verse 11. And they smote the men who were at the door of the house with blindness, both small and great, so that they wearied themselves to find the door. This verse has always amazed me. These homosexuals in Sodom were so given over to their sinful lust that even after being struck blind, they kept searching for Lot's door. Their blindness didn't even deter them. See, the more one tolerates sin, the harder their heart becomes until they get to the point where they refuse to repent, even while experiencing God's wrath. Verse 12, And the men, the angels, said unto Lot, Have you any here besides, son-in-law, and your sons, and your daughters, and whatsoever you have in the city? Bring them out of this place. And God has all the evidence that he needs. So there's only one thing left to do before he destroys those wicked cities, and that's to get all the righteous out of there. 13, for we will destroy this place because the cry of them is waxing great before the face of the Lord and the Lord has sent us to destroy it. And I don't know who was praying against the sins of those cities, but those prayers were heard and they are about to be answered. Pray against sin. God will answer. Sooner or later, he will put a stop to it now, we may not be thrilled with the process he uses. It may be painful, but that's how things usually work. The deeper the problem, the more painful the cure. 14. And Lot went out and spoke unto his sons-in-law, which married his daughters, and said, Up, get you out of this place, for the Lord will destroy this city. But he seemed as one who mocked unto his sons-in-law. Lot had no moral and spiritual credibility. When one is such a when one is such a moral compromiser, when he has compromised morality so far as to even offer his daughters to that pack of sinners, no one is going to take him seriously when he warns of God's judgment. You know, there are people in hell today in part because those who claim to be Christians live like the devil. People aren't stupid. So if they see a Christian who doesn't take God seriously, they sure won't feel the need to become a Christian themselves. What for? Why? What difference does it make? Well, it makes all the difference in the world but they don't know it. 14 again, Lot went out, spoke unto his sons-in-law, which married his daughters, and said, Up, get you out of this place, for the Lord will destroy this city. But he seemed as one who mocked unto his sons-in-law. Death and hell were knocking at their door, and they didn't know it. They didn't know it, and when they were warned, they didn't believe it. They evidently thought that they could continue to live in sin without any ramifications, without any accountability to, to God. Boy, were they wrong. Verse 15. 